I like PLA, but you can't use it outside, right? Not anymore. That's right, everybody. This PLA can go the distance. And that's super exciting because 90% of what I print is PLA. I like it especially because it prints super clean, it's cheap, there's loads of colors available. It's very common printing material. Now when you take this stuff outside for a half a second, or if it sits in direct sunlight for any amount of time, or if you even think about putting it inside of a hot car, your model's toast, bud. Cooked. You're gonna find yourself with an unrecognizable warped mess. And that's just how PLA is. So today we're gonna solve this by exploring Polymaker's brand new HT PLA. I think the HT stands for high temp. That would make sense. This stuff promises to resist higher temperature levels while maintaining that same level of printability that we expect to see from PLA. A while back I drew up these little light lens cover replacement things from my buddy's van that he was building into a camper. It's an old van and as such these little plastic light covers aren't really supported anymore. Aside from the used ones that you can find on eBay that cost way too much. So I drew this up in on shape, ran these off for him using regular PLA initially just to make sure the fitment was right. And they fit on there pretty well, so my buddy decided to just run them until they became a problem instead of me reprinting in something more suitable for outdoor use. Well, believe it or not, they didn't last one summer. I'm surprised they lasted longer than a week, honestly. So this is what they look like now. And conveniently, this happened as I began preparing for this video. So I loaded up this spool of black HT PLA on my H2D. I brought my buddy's lens cover model things into the slicer and began figuring out how I was supporting it and stuff. This is where I had an issue because I didn't remember exactly how I sliced these models to make them print successfully and the first couple did not print successfully. And this is the reason why I like physically modeling in supports and brims and that sort of thing. That way I don't have to remember which orientation I used and which slicer settings I used. My memory's not that great. Just ask my wife. But after a few failed attempts, I got the support brim recipe correct. And in fairness, this is a pretty dumb orientation to print the model in. I get that. Right on this tiny contact patch in the corner, don't make much sense. But, this does make the finished piece look the cleanest with all the layer lines going diagonally and it gives us the advantage of not trying to generate that many supports. So it's fine, long as you can get the recipe right. So when I loaded this into the H2D, I told it that it was using a Polylite PLA. I figured maybe that was the closest material preset to what I was using. And the prints came out looking excellent. If you have this side by side with any other PLA print, you would not be able to tell which one was the HT PLA and which one was the standard. The results look identical. You like that? Yeah, you like that. The next thing I wanted to print were these bed caps for a buddy of mine. He's got this AT4 GMC Canyon. He wanted to cover up these stake pockets in the bed rails. He got a couple of cheap covers off of Amazon and they worked fine, but he kept having those things fly off at highway speeds. That's not a big deal, they're not all that expensive, but it's kind of annoying. And I figured this would be a great time to test out this material. So the design process was straightforward enough. I took measurements of this shape that I was trying to fill to the best of my ability. And after messing with it in on shape for a little while, this is generally what we had. I was sure to draw up some nice beefy clips for the front and the sides. That was how I was gonna make sure this thing didn't fly off once the truck got up to speed because it would keep the part fully engaged with the stake pocket. The only other real feature I drew into this piece was this little relief here so you could put a flat head under there to pop these things out. So once again for testing I was using regular PLA. As I was refining the model I needed to iterate a couple of times and test against the real life pickup and then adjust my drawing to reflect those changes, print it out, 
test it, print it out, test it. If anybody wants to give me a 3D scanner, I think I could probably use one. I'm just saying. But early on in the testing, when I was fitting it up to the pickup, it was apparent that I was going to have to do several different layers of guessing and checking. First off, the clips were super tight and they kept breaking whenever I tried pushing the thing into the stake pocket. Ultimately, I was designing this with the sole purpose of staying in place at highway speeds as well as covering the hole. But it became apparent that maybe I didn't need the clips on the front and back as well because everything was just fitting way too tight. So throughout my resizing and tweaking and iterating, I finally landed on a well-refined model and I was ready to print it out of the final HTPLA. Now this was the point I wanted to throw in a little bit of extra pizzazz. So I found the AT4 logo, I embedded it into the print, and I used gray, white, and black to get that logo to pop on this sucker. And boy does it pop. And with that, the bed caps were done. They fit well, they look good, and I don't think they're gonna be popping off anytime soon. But of course, time will tell how well they stand up to the immense heat sitting under the sun all day. Hey, good news everybody, we're giving away a bunch of filament and a handful of printers. It's happening on our other channel that's called You Like That. You like that? Yeah, you like that. And all you need to do to enter is watch our first challenge video, listen for the secret phrase in that video because you'll need it for when you fill out the entry form that you'll find in the description of that video. You'll know you've got the secret phrase because it happens after I say, this is the secret phrase or something like that. But once that video hits 50,000 views, we're gonna start sending out prizes. And this brings me to my news. Polymakers jumped on board and they're giving away some filament too. That's right, so it wasn't enough to have Cheaty, Anycubic, CookieCAD, Newmakers, Sunlu, Elegoo, Cheetoo Systems, Bamboo, and Big Tree Tech on this project. No, 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 we had to blow it up a little bit more. So Polymakers been added to the list of stuff that you can win. So get entered, share the video with your friends so we can get to the views that we need and get these things sent out the door. Maybe you get yourself some HTPLA because Polymaker's buying it for you. I don't know. Now moving on to something a little bit different. I wanted to see how this PLA was gonna perform on a model that was a little bit more complicated. My mom likes having these little fairy house things in her garden. The grandkids enjoy them and it means they're not in my garden. So I guess for that reason, I also like my mom having these fairy houses in her garden. And as I was planning this video and thinking up ideas of stuff that I could print, this was something that my wife suggested. How convenient. Now for this model, I was trying to test if the HTPLA really printed in a comparable clean manner to regular PLA, even when we're talking about a complex model with really thin features. And to add to the complexity a little bit, I decided to color the model so it was doing regular color changes and that sort of thing as well. And to nobody's surprise, the model printed super well. I mean, not 100% perfect, but pretty well. So looking at the tiny thin features that are the railings and the beams for this little house, you can see that it's kind of a lot to ask of this printer. But everything came out super crispy, the stringing was pretty minimal, the color changes looked really good, all the surfaces were nice and smooth, the layers looked great. It's honestly right on par with what I would expect from regular PLA. But deep inside the roof, there was one little issue. It looks like as it was trying to print some beam or something right in the middle of the model, something came detached and there's just some strings up there now instead of like the model, I guess. But it wasn't enough to cause any issues to the rest of the model. The print certainly didn't fail and it's not very noticeable. So that's a win in my book, baby. So this thing turned out pretty well and I imagine it's fit for purpose. I don't know, we'll have to see how long it can last out in the sun. But with the top part printed, I printed out the base using this gradient filament, glued everything together and stuck it in the ground to live out its life, baking under the hot sun, freezing in the cold winter. Finally, to finish off this quick look into high temp PLA, I printed out a watering can. My wife often needs to refill her watering can while she's watering all the plants, so I wanted to print something super huge to see if we could eliminate that problem. That was the hope anyway. In general, I wanted to run off a bigger model using this gradient HTPLA that Polymaker sent over to us. I used it a bit on the fairy house, but those models were too small, so it didn't show off the color change very well. And a large model like this would really accentuate the gradient. So I sliced it up using a fuzzy skin as I like to do with a lot of these 
more aesthetically pleasing models. I hate that word. And whenever I use fuzzy skin in this kind of application, I also like to scatter the seam. The textured surface does pretty well to hide the pock marks that are created from the machine starting and stopping on each layer. Now in the case of this watering can, these seam pock marks are actually a little bit more prominent. So they aren't exactly hidden, but they still kind of look intentional because the whole thing's textured anyway. Speaking about slicing as well, I also used like a bunch of perimeters because water's heavy and this was going to hold a lot of water. And one main drawback to the HTPLA is the fact that it's not quite as strong as regular PLA. And with such a big can, that's going to be a lot of weight and water. So would this be strong enough to hold the weight? Let's go find out. Now, of course, my son saw the one that I made for his mom, and he wanted one the same. So I printed him one and scaled it down a little bit smaller, and it's super cute, and it'll probably work for him, but this model is like way more flimsy because I scaled it down. That makes sense. But especially when you put water in it, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how long this one's gonna last. I'm guessing it's not too long for this world, but it looks cool. So time will tell ultimately how long this stuff withstands the weather outside. But this was a great opportunity to explore some of the potential options for PLA prints that could live outside. If you're looking for the benefits of the easy printing of PLA, but the temperature resistance of something stronger like a PETG or something, maybe check this stuff out. It might be fit for your application. Thanks to Polymaker for giving us the opportunity to play around with their new filament and for partnering with us on our launch of the second channel and the giveaway that we're doing. That support's huge. Go support Polymaker because they support us and we like them. Go check out the second channel, watch the video, get entered to win a printer or some filament. We're pretty excited to be working with everybody that we're working with. We're very happy to give you guys free stuff. So let's pump the views up to 50,000 so we can start sending stuff out the door. Check the links below for any more information on any of the things that I said. Bye.